Good. All right, so we're here with Mr. Crook from Australia, who pulled off, I guess, relatively speaking, some pretty historic results, right? So it's top first top 64 for men's FA in Australia. It's been it's about 10 years, you said, right? I think it was about 2013. I'm not, James Robinson in the top 16 was the last one. I think it was It was in Catania. It's been a while. Was. And then admittedly, right, uh, as of right now, for now, uh, Australia hasn't been the strongest fencing nation in a while. So how did you... Like kind of, I guess I'll, I, you've obviously separated yourself a bit from the group to go find better training. Uh, how did you go about that? I was going to say, yeah, like I wanted to be overseas doing the full season yeah. for this year, so it made sense to be somewhere that was centrally European based. So I've been yeah, living and training in Paris for the last four months. Since, That's awesome. Yeah, March. So you, how long? So four months now. So obviously the results are showing pretty fast. That's like, uh, yeah. You went to Doha? Did a 32 in Doha and there was a bit of a dip, but certainly starting to notice the upward trend again now. Right, because like, yeah, you beat Garotso, that was a crazy bout, that and like, I'm pretty sure he, uh, he may or may not have disrespected you a bit. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it comes it comes with the territory, Canadians, we get that too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, why? Uh, how long are you planning to train in Paris? I'll be there up until the Olympics now, the so Olympics? Yeah. Okay. And then the next full season. That's right, and then uh, what do you think the... Like, what do you think the biggest difference has been in terms? Of, obviously, quality opponents, but is there a difference in the training in Paris that I'm you've noticed? Yeah, like you know, the match intensity that you get. You know, you know, a lot of times in Australia, you do get hard matches, but not at the same consistency level. Yeah, you know, everyone's like being able to consistently crazy train with people who are on the World Cup circuit it makes a big difference when you turn up here and it doesn't quite or feel quite so foreign. Right. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, exactly. Well, you, you show up and the intensity is already there. There's no warm up here. You're already at. Yeah. Like you're, you're raising your floor that's right. uh, and your ceiling goes up in that same sense. Yeah. Um, the flights from Australia are just so long that often oh, we get to do you know, two or three comps a year if we're basically from there. And so we come over, get exposed to it, go back just enough time to kind of lose yeah. touch a little bit and then come back and have to start all over again. And then if you had any, like, obviously, like, so is this all self funded for you? Yeah. That's what we I guess. have just started to get some funding uh, from the Australian government. And that's like, awesome. If I, if I was, uh, it's an Italian fencing. fencing. Uh, 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 yeah, this year Australian fencing has done a lot of work to kind of start getting us a bit of help to get to competitions. That's beautiful. So then like, to make a plan like this, is this like a plan you put in motion like two years ago where you started saving up? The, yeah, the kind of the idea was there and then it was all of a sudden we kind of hit the start of the season and I, just, I knew if I was going to be even a shadow of a shot at cracking the edge that was Olympics, there, eh? I had to pull the trigger. And so it was about a fortnight before Doha I decided that I was going to come home after Doha to sort out getting work and things yeah. sorted, and then after the best time staying overseas for about 12 months. That's awesome. I, like, I think it's inspirational because not a lot of people have the guts to just do it, anything you like, just pack up and leave for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a bit of it's a, it can be daunting. Sometimes you don't see results right away. Yeah. Um, and then on top of that, so now let's go with the last question. Actually, you're holding your epi, so we can look at your epi. So this is his epi. What uh, this Hans is? Lam. They went out of business in like 2000. There was a stretch where I thought I had the only three handles like that in Australia. Uh, but we've since found a couple more. And my dad was going to a school that had fencing you know, 40 years ago. Uh, and they're like, oh, we've got this gear stored in our storeroom that we don't want anymore. Do you want it? <laughs> uh, and he's just looked into a bag with 30 off the minute. Like, yes, yes, we will have that. Thank you very much. And then, so last question. So for anyone who's like in a bit of a weaker country generally, what's your... Obviously, other than moving out, because uh, that's not always the possibility, what do you think, like, what's a, what would be your advice for them if they really want to up their game? Like, part of it is the consistency. You know, if you can only do two or three comps a year, that's better than nothing. Yeah. So being able to come over and you know, just be on the circuit and expose yourself to that level. Just go expose Even if it's yourself. only a couple times, it certainly makes a difference. And it's just not letting up when you get home. You know, no matter where you are in the world, you can always do the conditioning and the stuff that means that when yeah. you get here, you don't just suddenly get hit by this wall of, oh, everyone's stronger and faster. Yeah. And Hold yourself to a higher standard, basically. And you got yeah, you know, you got to keep on top of the stuff that you can so that as soon as you do come over, you can start trying to you know, tweak yeah. what it's easier to work on while you're here. Well, I love to hear your story, man. Thank you. Yeah. I'm rooting for you as a fellow Commonwealth brother. Yeah. Good luck. And then uh, I'll probably see you, uh, see you around next year. See you in the next one.